will see the word of Allah where he will say that the prophets were commanded to, they, to say to their people, Worship Allah alone. You have none but he. Or they would say, Be mindful of Allah. Be conscious, aware of your dealings with him. We're going to talk about dua. And dua is, uh, is the ibadah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Dua huwa al-ibadah. Dua which is translated as supplication or as invocation or as devotion, love, worship. All those words mean that one thing, dua. And dua is both a praise of Allah and a request from Allah. And it's done in those two ways. And we're going to study some of the dua that Allah has captured for us in the Quran. And we're going to look at some of the dua of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to see its eloquence and to see how it was formulated so that we can have usul, principles in how you and I ask for our own things. One of the most often asked question of me is Sheikh, brother, brother Yahya, how do I ask Allah for what I want when I don't know how to say it in Arabi? Like I'm in sujood. I know the Prophet said, and you're going to say to us, Aqrabu ma yakunu al-abdu li rabbi. The closest a slave is to his master, his Lord, wa huwa sajidun bayna yaday, is when they are bowed down on their face before him. How do I ask Allah? I don't speak Arabi. Can I just say it in my heart? What if all I know is Urdu, Pashtu? What if all I know is uh, Somali? What if all I know is in, uh, Bahasa? What, that's all I know. What can, can, I, can I say that? Can I use those words in Salah, in my sujood, or not? Dua is the essence of every worship you and I do. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his action of Dua, his action of dua, meaning how he did his dua, his hand movements, his hushed voice. Ud'u rabbakum tadarru'an khufya. Quietly, sometimes the Prophet ﷺ was very quiet. And other times it was petition. His hands were up to the heavens, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were so high, his shawl fell off his back, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. His jacket fell off him. He was so much in petition and in need of Allah Azza wa Jal. There's an art to dua, and inshaAllah, I hope by the end of our time today that we will capture some of it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يُسْتَجَبْ لِأَحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يَعْجَلْ Every single one of you, me, you, man, woman, child, even, even an unbeliever in Allah. Really? The Prophet ﷺ said, and the hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. He says to you and I, ittaqi, be afraid of da'wat al-mazloom wa in kana kafira. Be afraid of the dua of an oppressed person, even if he is an unbeliever. Because Allah will answer that dua and raise it above the heavens, above the clouds, Yunadiha wa yunajiha. And Allah will say, Come to me, come to me, so that I may answer you and give this dua victory. Even someone who doesn't believe in Allah, who says, My God, help me. This man, Muslim, a Muslim, has oppressed me, has taken my wage, my sweat was not paid on time, my effort was not recognized. The car that they turned into and left without leaving a note to pay me compensation. Oh God, whoever did this, curse him. He doesn't believe in the Allah you and I know. And their dua is heard because they were wronged. The animals are heard in their petition. The Prophet would respond to the cry and to the anguish of an animal. 
He responded to the anguish of a burdened camel. There was a camel that had too much burden put on it. And as the Prophet walked out of his masjid, as is in Sahih al-Bukhari, he saw this camel, and as soon as the camel saw him, it cried, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It knows who, who to turn to. And the Prophet ﷺ gravitated towards this camel and put it down on the ground, let it sit. And he began to unpack its burden, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said out loud, whose camel is this? Who has oppressed this beast? They have not been created to be used and misused in this way, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's an art to dua. And there's a way to be heard by Allah. And there's a way to be rejected by Allah. And there's dua where the Prophet ﷺ says that the person will make dua and the angels will capture it and imprison it and subdue it. And in other statements, the Prophet said the dua will be thrown back at the petitioner, striking him in the face because it is unworthy of ascending to the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah says in the Quran, Subhanahu wa Taala, we begin our salah with these verses, where we say, in honoring Allah, we praise Allah first. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Twice in three sentences, you repeat His most well-known description, the merciful, the especially merciful. Maliki Yawmuddin, you understand that you will be bowed to him and be questioned by him. Ya Allah, I will be questioned by you on the day of judgment. You are its master. Iyaka na'bud, therefore I submit. It's the first dua that is recorded for us in the Quran of asking Allah through subjugation. Iyaka na'bud, only you, O Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, will I turn to in dua? Wa iyaka nista'een. And only you, Allah, will I ask help from. So the next thing, ihdina, guide me. It's the essential of our life. Allah says in Surah Al Baqarah, وقال رب, in Surah Ghafir, uh, وقال ربكم ادعوني استجب لكم. Your Lord said, Ask me. Invoke me, I will answer you. But remember that those who are too boastful and arrogant and proud to ask of me shall enter Jahannam in humiliation. Now this is the first principle. I want you to make note of this principle. First principle. The more requests you make of Allah, the more deserving you are of His mercy. And the less you ask Allah for things, the further away you are from His mercy. Sometimes you and I as human beings, we look at it wrong. You know, if I was to invite you to a barbecue to my home, as I said, I want the sun is shining, this is Perth. MashaAllah, for those watching overseas, make them jealous, <laughs> right? This is Perth, MashaAllah. Barbecues every day, they think. Right? They think all the time, it's just barbecue, barbecue, barbecue. So you come to my house, and this is your first time to my home. And you know, we're friends, but not really friends, friends. And all of a sudden you come to my house, and I say, thanks for coming to my house. Do you mind just mowing the lawn while I finish up? <laughs> you would find that absurd. You'd say, what kind of, what? It, it's ridiculous that the man would invite me for a barbecue and asks me to do physical labor. And we kind of use that logic with Allah. We assume that because we're not friends with Allah, and that's why Allah talks about awliya, the companions of Allah, the nearest to Allah. We assume because we are not on an informal basis with Allah. You need to be in a really informal basis with Allah. Allah needs to know your name because you remember His name. That's the essence of the Prophet ﷺ saying, Allah says, remember me and I will remember you. You're the guy who's always with Allah. You're the one who prays the two rak'ah before Fajr, because Fajr is just not good enough. You need Allah. 
You're the one who takes a little bit of a break to pray two rak'ah, four rak'ah duha, salatul awwabin, before dhuhr. You're the person who seeks to do the sunnah in your salah, the 12 rak'ah that builds for you a house in Jannah every day because you did those 12 rak'ah extra. You're known to Allah. And the Prophet says, إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهَ عَبْدًا نَادَ جِبْرِيلٍ the hadith in Bukhari, when Allah loves a person, He calls Jibreel and says, Ya Jibreel, inni uhibbu fulan and fa'ahibbu. Jibreel, this man, this woman, this individual, I love them. You love them. Fayuhibbuhu Jibreel. Jibreel loves you. Jibreel loves Yah Ibrahim, mashallah. Inshallah. Make dua. Say, Ya Rabb. Right? Jibreel loves Yahya. We'll go on that premise. Wa yunadi Jibreel fi ahli sama. Jibreel calls out to everything in the heavens. And says, Inna Allah yuhibbu fulanan fa'ahibbuh. Allah loves this person. Love him as well. وَتُوضَعُ لَهُ الْقَبُولُ فِي الْأَرْضِ And on earth, Allah's acceptance for you becomes known. Even those who are not, you know, your best of friends find some tolerance for you. Even your enemies cannot find the ways they, and the means they seek to harm you because of that love of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the first lesson is that the less you ask Allah, the further you are away from His mercy. Become acquainted with Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah also says, say, قُلِ ادْعُوا اللَّهَ أَوِدْعُوا الرَّحْمَانِ Notice this ayah, this is a beautiful ayah. Allah says, قُلْ Tell them, whether you ask, Ya Allah, or you say, Ya Rahman. See, Ya Rahman is, uh, you know, you ask for Allah's mercy when you need it. Sometimes when you feel you're strong, there's no one in, look at my bank account. I have a job, I have a home, I have a family, I have children, I've been educated, free health care. We're in Australia, Akhi. <laughs> bank loans right, left and center. No problem. Alhamdulillah. If Allah wasn't happy with me, why would I have all this? I have people back home who don't have what we have, alhamdulillah. قَدْ فُضِّلْتُ عَنْهُمْ I was given more than others. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yes, there's moments where you need to invoke Allah. You don't think you need His mercy. Then there's other moments where Allah drives you into the ground. Where you are put on your face by circumstance. Where everything that was stable is upside down. Where what you thought you built... Allah shows you that He can take from you because it was not yours in beginning. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whether you are needing Allah or you come now to know that you need Ar-Rahman, notice that all of the super pious, they always call Ar-Rahman. Maryam, she's praying in Bayt al-Maqdis in Jerusalem. It's her own private quarters. Mary alayhi salam, the mother, no one is near her. All of a sudden she sees the image of a man. Oh Allah, oh, oh whoever you are, I seek refuge with the merciful one. She remembers Ar-Rahman first. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever you're going to call Allah with, remember He has the most excellent complete names. Unchanging names. Allah is complete in who He is, unchanging. His rahmah does not change because I'm not deserving of it. Allah's mercy is not just extended to me when I did good. He is always merciful and therefore He has the most blessed and continuous names, Azza wa Jal. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when they ask you concerning me, about me, I am near. That's amazing. Allah doesn't say the word qul. See in the upper, the verse before it, it says say, qul, say to them. But here when you ask, where, where is Allah in my life? I'm near. I'm with you. Inni ma'akuma asma'u wa ara. I see all, hear all, I know all. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Let's dive in. Let's look at some of the dua from the Quran, some of the dua from the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. First dua: Rabbana zalamna anfusana, wa in lam taufil lana wa tarhamna lana kunan min al khasirin. Who was the first to make this dua? Adam alayhi salam. This is the dua of humanity. You and I need this dua as much as Adam needed that dua when he strayed from the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the dua that makes up the totality of your life. Every time you do wrong, and you will do wrong. And I want you to understand that you will do wrong. Why will you do wrong? Because within you is that capacity. Allah has given you the ability to choose and not all of our choices will be correct. You're flawed. You're not destined to be flawed because you can become complete. And the Prophet ﷺ says, كَمُولَ مِنَ الرِّجَالِ كَثِيرٌ The hadith is in Bukhari. Many men have attained that completion with Allah. And many women have attained that completion. At the head of them is Maryam, the mother of Isa. Khadija, the wife of Muhammad وسلم, the daughter of Khuwailid. Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun. And Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad Notice the first word, Rabbana, our Lord. Have you ever wondered why you don't say Rabbi as often? Why do you always hear the Prophet saying Rabbana? Why do you hear Ibrahim saying Rabbana? Why do you hear Musa saying Rabbana when they're asking for themselves? Because the second etiquette that we learn today is that when you include others in your need, Allah solves your need. See, your premise of being here on earth is as khulafa in this earth. That you keep this earth ready for those who will live therein after you. That they are prepared to use it as you have used it and benefit as you have benefited in life. And therefore your dua must be inclusive. Uh, don't be of those who says, well, everyone knows how to make dua, brother. I got to look after myself. Yani, Allah, listen to me first, and then we can worry about these others. Right? No. Rabbana. Include others. Think of others. Intend others in your heart. Zalamna anfusana. Third principle. Admit your mistake. Do you know your mistake? Keep it within you. Understand that it is something that you must deal with between you and Allah. Zalamna anfusana. I did zulm. I knew what you expect of me. And I made a mistake. I chose the wrong way. Zalamtu nafsi. Faghfirli. Oh Allah, give me your forg forgiveness, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا Notice that the request of Adam and Hawa isn't, Oh Allah, just forgive me. It's that they understand now the magnificence of Allah in their life. That if you don't forgive me, who do I have? Where will I go? What success will I have in this world? Where, who can I turn to? وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا If I don't have you, O oh Allah, to turn to every time I seek forgiveness, I will always be from those who are outcast and losers. As Muslims, our faith is the only faith that promotes tawbah. I want you to understand this. For example, uh, you see in the movies, if you don't know it personally, you'll see in the movies or on TV, that when someone does something wrong and they're Roman Catholic, they'll visit the church and they'll do what? Confession, right? They'll sit with a priest and they'll tell him what's wrong and it's their form of penance. But for us as Muslims, we see that as being inadequate. Because why? When they ask you about me, O Muhammad, say I am near. It's between me and Allah. ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَطَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Allah also records in the Quran the dua of Ibrahim where he says Rabbi ja'alni muqeema salah wa min dhurriyyati 
Rabbana wa taqabbal dua. He begins the dua asking for himself. Rabbi ja'alni muqeema salah. Oh Allah, let me be consistent in salah. Let's pause here for a second. Who's asking Allah help so that he can pray? Prophet who? Ibrahim. What, what luck is Yahya going to have in the world, man? If Prophet Ibrahim is saying, Ya Allah, help me, I need to pray. Ya Allah, help me to make my salah. If Prophet Ibrahim needs Allah's divine intervention in his life to keep him on the straight path of prayer, most of the Imams, when they analyze this ayah of As-Sirat Al-Mustaqeem, the first thing that they say is As-Salah. It's prayer. That's the straight path. Because إِذَا صَلُحَتْ صَلُحَ الْعَمَلُ كُلُّ Everything is accepted by Allah Azza wa Jal. You must ask Allah to help you with Salah. And therefore, at the moment you end As-Salamu Alaykum, As-Salamu Alaykum, the first thing that you say is Astaghfirullah اللَّهَ الْعَظِيمُ Oh Allah, forgive me. Why? Because I could have prayed better. There were moments where I thought of my wife, of my work, of my children, of my school, of my this, of my that, of my homework, of my cooking. رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ أَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ And then you say, اللهم, my Lord, أعني, help me. Help me. To do what? Remember you. عَلَى ذِكْرِكَ وَشُكْرِكَ wa. To pray better. Ya Allah, I did dhuhr. It was okay. Ya Allah, give me a better asr. Ya Allah, help me today. I did my five. Ya Allah, let me do it tomorrow better. Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as-salah. Notice how he puts it upon Allah to assist him. He says, ij'alni, you make me. It's like, it's almost as if you're saying, Ya Allah, wake me up for fajr. <laughs> like, have a bird fly through the window or something, you know? Get, uh, let some driver skid and, and I wake up, oh, okay, it's Fajr time, right? Do something, Ya Allah, to help me. He's pleading. Ij'alni, make me from them. Use whatever tools for me, sub, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to help me arrive at my salah. Wamin dhurriyati. Notice every dua of the prophets is never just for themselves. Never do you find a righteous person that they are greedy in dua just between them and Allah. They always include others. And the first of those who they include is their own children, their own responsibility. وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِي And from my children, and my grandchildren, and my great-grandchildren. You know, there are people who lived in this land hundreds of years ago who were Muslim. There were families who came from Afghanistan and other places who were Muslim. When you go to that Perth mosque and you look at that tile and it's been more than a hundred years that Muslims have prostrated to Allah Azza wa Jal. وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِي You have this amana. ذُرِّيَّ ذَرْ It means seed. Your children are a seed. You're planting them in this environment. Oh Allah, irrigate them with salah. Nurture them with Iman. Give them the guidance, that straight path that I ask for myself, that I ask you to put me upon. And don't let them go to waste. وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِي Here's the fourth lesson. رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَاءَ Oh Allah, answer and accept my dua. You need to make dua for your dua. You can't just say, I asked. You asked, and then what? Well, I asked, khalas, Allah, yani, where is it? I've had literally people, you know, they would say, Brother Yahya, I wanted to get married, you know, and I made istikhara, and I, made, I prayed yesterday, and nothing. Say, Akhi, it's been, what, 13 hours? He goes, yes. Nah, dua. يُسْتَجَبْ لِأَحَدِكُمْ مَا لَمْ يَعْجَلْ You're answered as long as you're not earnest, worried that it won't be answered. Allah says beautifully in the Qur'an, أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُتَّرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ Who else but Allah 
will answer the one who invokes him in dire need except Allah, meaning even an unbeliever. And Allah uses this in the Quran. He says that there are people in the ship and they say, in They say, My Lord, if you save us, We will be from the best and the most sincere in worship to you, O oh Allah. But when they're saved to the shore, they forgot. They do their own thing again. And therefore, the one who answers the mutar, Allah, why does he answer him in the dire need? It is only one reason. Because when you are in dire need, you are in sincerity. You know when, you're, you, know when you make dua as if you're in a drowning ship, you know how sincere that dua is? That's when Allah answers you. And when you who else is going to answer? It's Allah. So when you make dua and it's just like a... Re, you know how some people after salah, they do this little thing, they go like this. Rabbana, Rabbana, Rabbana. And they just, you know, like, just khalas. I've done the formality. If I didn't do it, people say, why didn't you do it? When we know the essence of the dua of the Prophet ﷺ after the prayer is not like that. His dua was tasbih. Right? It wasn't just a formality. Say a few Rabbanas and let's move along. Right? No. Need. I need you, O oh Allah. Whether you are Ar-Rahman because I'm pushed to my knees, or you are Allah who I've not recognized your might in my life. Third ayah. رَبِّ تْخِلْنِي مُدْخَلَ صِدْقَ وَأَخْرِجْنِي مُخْرَجَ صِدْقَ وَاجْعَلْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ سُلْطَانًا نَصِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Isra, and this was the dua that was made by the Prophet Sallallahu as he was entering Mecca. You know, he's entering into Mecca now. After 10 years, they had banned him from it Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A few years earlier in the, in the Hudaybiyah, they made him return back, couldn't even make Umrah. And after the peace treaty, they broke it with violence and the Prophet returns with strength. And he says, Rabbi adkhinni mudkhala sidq. My Lord, enter me into good and allow me an exit to be good. This is uh, a central dua that the believers make. And many of the imams, they say that this type of dua and this particular dua is to be said at times of confrontation and struggle and difficulty in your life. You're going into a job interview, you're going in to write a test, Right? You're going in to fulfill an act that you feel apprehension about. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Oh Allah, allow me to enter into that which will be good. Because there are many things that we think will be good for us, when we find inside they are hollow and not full of good. And then we try to get out, but it's difficult. So it's not just I want to enter into good, but I also want to have an exit into good and prosperity. And give me from you, O oh Allah, an authority that will help me along. Sultan and Nasira. The Imams of Tafsir, they say, an angel who will guard me all throughout this process. Rabbi la tadurni fardan wa anta khayrul warisin. O Allah. Leave me not single, childless, though you are the best of inheritors. This dua is a dua that shows the anguish of someone who needs something from Allah and none can provide it but He. But it shows the faith that balances their request from Allah with knowledge that it is Allah who can take back anything. See, sometimes people think, I'm going to ask Allah, oh Allah, give me, and then you receive. And it becomes one of the greatest tests in your life that you were given something you wanted so much that Allah then recalls it from you and takes it back from you. As one of the greatest tests you have in life. And therefore this dua is, Oh Allah, what you will give me is going to be from you. And if you take it back from me, Oh Allah, you are the best who will return and take things away. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
We're going to spend a little bit of time with the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. Anyone know something special about these two verses? From the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ? Okay, first, they are a treasure from the treasures of the Arsh, of the mighty Arsh of Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet ﷺ said, Utitu min kinza al-arsh. I was given a treasure from Allah. And these two verses were it. Second, when the Prophet ﷺ ascended to heaven in Al-Isra wal Mi'raj, these last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, and this is the last of them, were communicated by Allah directly to the Prophet. ﷺ. And they're the only place in the Quran where Allah spoke the Qur'an to the Prophet وسلم, as is in the hadith of Imam al-Nasai. Third, that these two verses are the protection of all protection. The Prophet وسلم, said, the one who recites the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, Hufiz, is protected, guarded, at night until they wake, and in the morning until they lay to rest. Listen to the eloquence that Allah seeks of us. رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَاخِذْنَا إِنَّ نَسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَأْنَا Our Lord, don't blame us for the things that we have forgotten or fallen into error in. What's the difference between khati'a and ithm? Ithm, both words are translated in English as sin. Ithm is sin and khati'a is sin. But khati'a is a mistake. I didn't mean it. And in many aspects of our life, there are things that we do wrong unintentionally. And therefore, the first level of seeking forgiveness from Allah is from the things that we assume He will forgive us anyway for. رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَخِذْنَا Oh Allah, don't blame us for it. إِن نَسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَأْنَا Forgetting is a natural process of all human beings. As is narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari, one day the Prophet ﷺ was praying. And he prayed Salat al-Asr five rak'ah, instead of four, five. And the Sahaba are praying behind him, just quiet. And after the Salah, one of them says, Ya Rasulullah has our prayer changed? Because when the Prophet does something, it's the way it should be. The Prophet said, no. They said, <laughs> because you added a fifth rak'ah, should we do this tomorrow? And the Prophet ﷺ said, "Ala akhbartuni, fa inni bashar, fa inna ma ana bashar. Akhtau, ansa kama tansaw. I am only a human being. I forget the way you forget." Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In that is a sense of humility of this noble, privileged messenger of Allah Azza wa Jal, that he accepts this humanity that as Muslims we never elevate him past his status with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. I'm a human being. I forget the way you forget. رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَاخِذْنَا إِنْ نَسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَأْنَا Second, رَبَّنَا وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِصْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِنَا Our Lord, do not put a burden on us like the burden that you put on the people who came before us. There are those who came before us, nations that came before us, who were given blessings by Allah but it was a burden upon them because they were not able to sustain it. And therefore in our ibadah, our worship of Allah Azza wa Jal, we never go to extremes. And you see that the habit of the Prophet ﷺ was always one of moderation and consistency and continuation of small steps that lead to ever bigger, nearer challenges that one faces in building their iman in Allah Azza wa Jal.